today I wanted to talk a little bit about taking uh, or really focusing on the theory of, you know, trading equities and, and really move it into the practical arena. Um, and so I was thinking to myself, what would be the best, you know, kind of simplest place to start that? And I honestly, I started with moving averages. Moving averages are something that kind of everybody uh, it learns about initially just because it is uh, one of the most simple, actually the simplest filter. So what I'm going to talk about today, and I'll just go through my, my slides here, is um, I'll introduce myself, go through the objective of what I think the presentation is going to look like, talk about moving averages, um, and then some more uh, uh, visual aids. So uh, if you don't know, my name is Benjamin George. I have a PhD in aerospace and engineering, so I'm an engineer that turned into a, an investor. Um, and I'm a very new investor at this. Um, and it's only starting at January 2023. So I come from the perspective of somebody who um, hasn't been doing this for long, but is looking to grow and and and, and learn more about this. So uh, I invite you to find me on on Quantopian's uh, uh, you know forum. Uh, you can always DM me. Um, I love to interact and, and meet with people. So let's jump into it. The objective for today's lesson is going to be simple. Uh, it's a simple strategy in Quant Connect. Uh, that's primarily a tool I use uh, for my coding and, and fact testing. Um, and we'll basically implement a uh, selling options based on moving averages. But to make this lecture as short as possible, I'm gonna show you how to do moving averages in, in Quant Connect. And then we'll next time we'll talk about understanding how to use the, those moving averages as indicators for uh, selling premium, option premium. So. First, let's start off, what is a moving average? There's two types of moving averages that we typically see as uh, investors. And we see a simple moving average where you take the price for the last, let's just say 100 days, and you just take an, an average of it. And then that's you're gonna be your uh, filter for what the, the current price is gonna look like. Typically for simple moving averages, each of the prices are you know evenly weighted. And so uh, what you'll see uh, is is most of the time people use these for for looking at longer duration periods and understanding a general trend. The other type of moving average is is the exponential moving average, uh, which is typically more often used for comparing the recent price action to uh, the price action from from uh, kind of previously. Um, and in an exponential moving average, the equations on the right. But what you'll see is that you weight the recent prices more than the uh, previous price. And that's typically used for identifying recent trends. So kind of the pros and cons, I mean, we all know this, but I'm going to, you know, iterate it just so that uh, we're on the same page. Uh, the cons are it's a lagging indicator. So you have to have, you know, the pricing for however many days uh, to get your, your current, uh, you know, moving average. Um, it, and as we all know, right, the previous price action may not be an indicator of the future. Uh, also it can be a really poor indicator if the price is volatile, right? So if, if the price is moving sideways, you're going to probably see that your, your uh, moving average is not going to move as much. And so it's not going to be a really great indicator for uh, necessarily what's going to happen in the future because the price is moving so much. And then I, I put this as a con, you know, the moving average only looks at uh, price action. So this was kind of tricky of whether I wanted to be a pro or a con. You know, on one hand, looking only at price is one piece of information. So you're not taking into account the fundamentals or maybe some other pieces of information. But on the other hand, maybe that other pieces of information are, are noise. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of have to weigh the level of confidence you put into your moving average as an indicator based on, you know, the fact that you're only basing it on price, right? So you can't throw it out uh, completely, but you also can't, you know, trade completely solely based on it. I think that's kind of where you have to figure out your balance. Um, the pros, we all know this, right? It's simple to implement to code. It's simple to understand the output. And surprisingly, you know, I think uh, it can be um, accurate at estimating price levels. If moving averages weren't somewhat effective, I think people would have um, thrown them away a long time ago. And just to kind of give you a qu quick example, uh, this is just the, uh, you know, Al Apple price action. Um, from it looks like June 2018 for the last few years. And the blue line is what I want you to focus on. And that, that blue line is a 100-day moving average. And so what you can see is that as that uh, 
price, and this is on a daily daily chart, uh, a couple times it actually hit that moving average and bounces off. Now, is it 100% accurate? Oh, no, of course not, right? You can see here at that very last uh, circle, uh, it actually breaks through that moving average, and it was a poor indicator. The previous one, two, three, four times, it was actually good. So all of this to say, you know, it's not 100% accurate. Obviously, if it was, right, everybody would arb that, arbitrage that, 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 that information out. But it has a um, surprising, I think in my, when I was looking back at it, it's surprisingly informational, I guess is the right way to say it. Um, with that information, I think what we're going to do is actually, I'm going to jump to the Quant Connect platform. I'll take 30 seconds here to kind of pause and ask if anyone has any questions. I mean, this is kind of a, uh, yeah, while I, while I transition over. Benjamin, thanks for, uh, for taking the time out to, to host us. Um, um, no worries. Did, did you try vo the volume weighted moving average and did it, uh, seem to look any different from these other ones, these other moving averages? So great question. Nice. I, I didn't, but it's um, what I'm going to show you in Quant Connect. So the reason I didn't do it was because this is the most basic. Um, and so I just wanted to start off with the most basic. Um, but what you can do when I jump onto the platform, what we can do is do some quick uh, research. And I bet you the the volume weighted average um, is, is another indicator that you can use. Um, and so, uh, yes, that is a very simple implementation. And I think probably people would say that'd be more accurate than moving average, but yeah. So um, we're gonna switch over to the platform, uh, the Quant Connect platform. I am by no means a power user. Um, I've been using uh, the Quant Connect platform for about a year. So from January, 2023 till probably 2020, uh, actually I still use it, but I will say um, I paid for it initially and then uh, actually uh, Quant Connect uh, sent me a credit. So just full disclosure, Quant Connect sent me a credit, but I don't have any affiliation. They're not sponsoring me. I just happen to use the platform. They saw a video, sent me some credit. So, um, but you can help FOSS out if you sign up for an account with their, you can see it in the newsletter. They have like a link. If you like it, go help FOSS out. Uh, but I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, okay, cool. So let's jump on here. So this is the Quant kind of platform, I'm sure you guys can all see it. Um, very simple interface, um, and I'm just going to show you kind of the basics of what it looks like. So um, start with a class. You basically set a start date. You set your cash level. You set an equity. Basically, this next line of code is your simple moving average. This is your benchmark that you set. And then this on data is basically like where you're feeding in the trade bar or your your pricing information and so what i'm going to do is this is just a simple back test starting from november 10th 2020 and what we're doing is we just set up a simple 100 day moving average and we're going to uh basically uh wait until 100 days have passed before we start using it so what we're doing here is i'm just updating the simple moving average with the the uh the trade bar or the the open high low close uh, well, actually, in this case, I'm only filling it with the closed prices, but you can get, you know, open, high, low, closed volume. I'm going to plot that data. And then what we're going to do is if we're not invested and the current closed price is less than the, the uh, price of the simple moving average, we're going to buy. And if it's greater than 1.1 times the simple moving average or 10% higher than the simple moving average, we're going to sell. And we're going to basically start with Apple. Very simple example. Uh, I'm just going to hit the play button here, which runs the back test, um, and we'll see the results. So while we're doing this, we can actually, um, oh, well, let's actually just look at the results here. So the reason this works so well is because we're in a bull bull market. So again, don't, please don't trade this. Uh, this is not a good idea to just solely trade. And I, it was a bull market where Apple was doing well. So please don't, uh, don't trade this just like that simply. But it'll give you a really good idea of what it looks like. So what we did is we were looking at the price. This gives you an equity. But let's take a look at the orders here. So what we did here is, um, let me see if we have a plot here. Uh, yes, here's my simple moving average plot. Uh, ah, So here it is. So what we're looking at is we're basically looking at the price action and just calculating the simple moving average over these you know, last uh, three years. And then from there, uh, based on that, we're able to just buy and sell and obviously buying and selling Apple a lot. And so that's really the, 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 the whole crux of, of using or implementing that kind of simple, like the simple filter in 
uh, in Quant Connect. Now I want to show you, cause I'm almost out of time here. I want to show you one really cool trick that we're going to talk about with Magnificent 7. One of the things I did was I just went to their ask me a thing here and I just said, hey, how do I use simple moving average for multiple tickers? And they have like a little AI functionality here that basically gives you the code uh, to implement that. Really simple, really easy to do. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next time in our discussion is I'm just going to show you how to implement that. Uh, and actually, because Joshua Thomas mentioned it, I will actually take a note to to, to implement the, the volume weighted average price in the uh, in the next lecture as well. Any final questions? Um, I was going to ask, how would you try to extrapolate future data? Like, would you can you run like simu like you have the you have the average data already, but then can you do like simulations and try to simulate the future data? Sure, but but you would have to you would have to have some sort of way to predict what so you have to have some sort of model or some sort of uh way to mm -hmm. i guess model of what the future is going to look like now the moving average is not a great way to do that right like that is that it is way too there's not enough input right all, all the moving average is looking at the price action right so it's not a like you'll get a you'll get an indication of what the price could be but I would wonder, right. like the uncertainty for that indication is probably going to be, you know, very large, right? Like that's just not um, uh, a way to do that. But what we can do, Joshua, is if you can ping me off, off, offline, we can go, you know, do some research on what would be a better model for understanding or predicting price. Um, the SMA is just probably a little bit too basic for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to keep doing research as well. I, I need to. Uh... Yeah. I mean, hey, if you can figure that out, you'll win the will win the stock market, right? Like, isn't that the yeah. isn't that what we all try to figure out? It's like you were saying, um, I think a few months ago, just that you, you need to be, you know, dedicated. You need to really go after it and, and yeah. learn by doing. And and I need to keep that in mind in my yeah. Days, so, so so just a heads up, if I didn't tell you before, you can get a free account on Quant Connect, and you can actually do this basic like what I did here. You can do with a free account. Um, it it's just the the paid for versions you get some benefits and stuff like that but the free account you can do i know that norgate also has some data i'll give you a shout out uh richard uh he also i think you provide data as well so you can do kind of like back testing with like python code right based on the data you provide is that right richard yeah that's right yeah if you if you didn't want to use the uh the quant connect platform or just want to use straight python or yeah. Whatever you like, you know, C sharp. Um, there's different analysis packages as well. So, well, if there's nothing else, um, thank you guys for for joining me. Um, for you on the East Coast, uh, you know, it's 11:30. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.